Hey everybody, it's Miss Hildreth again, and I'm gonna scroll over here. Um, this is day two, this is explore. So students will watch, you're watching the video, um, and use the passages to answer the questions about the Byzantine Empire's geography. Students will use the video or read the passages on their own. They will answer the questions on slides eight through 10. And of course, I'll put the video link here when we're finished. All right, so we're gonna go to slide eight. Oops, okay. And we're gonna scroll up. So in the slides eight, nine, and 10, you're gonna see either a short passage or a diagram and then some questions, and they relate to geography. So here's document one. When he had settled his empire and had freed himself from foreign foes, he resolved on founding a city which should be called by his own and should equal in fame even Rome. In obedience to the command of God, he therefore chose to enlarge the city formerly called Byzantium, and here he laid out a plan of a large and beautiful city and built gates on a high spot of ground, whence they still are still visible from the sea to sailors and easy to defend from foreign invaders. He then surrounded it with high walls. Likewise, he built splendid dwelling houses, and he summoned families from all over the empire and from other countries to come populate his new city. Okay, first off, who's he? He is Constantine, right? Where are they talking about? Constantinople, which is now the new capital of the Byzantine Empire, okay, which you're going to find out about. So the first question says, according to document one, why did Constantine choose to build Constantinople on top of a hill? So you're going to go back in the passage and it tells you why. Give me a reason. So you're going to say Constantine chose to build Constantinople on a hill because and then tell me why. OK, then the second question for this document is what evidence is there in document one that shows Constantinople would be the center of cultural defense? diffusion. Now you're thinking, what is cultural diffusion? Basically, it's the spread of culture. Now, what is culture? Culture is dress. It's music. It's um, it's part of our livelihood that makes us who we are, right? And depending on what country you come from, if you came from another country, you would bring certain foods or so certain religious beliefs. So, what they're asking you is, and it is in the passage, what like proof or evidence or facts or details or examples, okay, that's what evidence, those are all words for evidence. What shows you that, that Constantinople would be a center of different cultures, right? It would be kind of like a melting pot, okay? So that's, if you have further questions, but both, um, both answers are directly in that passage that I just read. You may have to go back and reread. So that's slide number eight. Okay, so then we're going to move on down to slide number nine. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Slide number 10, which will be number nine. Okay, so... Um, so what you're going to do is on this question, okay, so there's four questions you have a map and it says trade about AD 1000. So what you're going to do is you're gonna answer these questions using this map. So the first question says, according to document two, what city was the most likely the center of trade in the Byzantine empire? So you're gonna look at the Byzantine empire, you're gonna look at this map, you're gonna figure out what city it is. Then you're gonna tell me what goods came from Africa. These are the goods that came from Africa. What goods came from Europe? And then the fourth question, how would these trade routes con contribute to Constantinople's prosperity? Okay, now, number four is an inferential question. You're not going to be able to get the answer from the actual map. You're going to look at the routes and you're going to come to a conclusion based off of what you see. Okay, all right. And then our final question. So it's another document. In its heyday, Constantinople was the richest and largest European city, exerting a powerful cultural pull and dominating, <coughs> excuse me, economic life in the Mediterranean. This was due to the strategic position commanding the trade routes between the Aegean and the Black Sea. 
Any traders in the area would be drawn to Constantinople and its great marketplaces. The Byzantine emperors, knowing this, uniformly taxed imports and exports at 10%. So anything coming in or going out of Constantinople was going to get taxed. So if something cost $10, like let's say you bought a watch and the watch cost $10, you were going to get taxed 10% on top of that $10. Okay. Um, taxes could be paid with coinage, but also with luxury goods such as silk and precious metals. The Byzantines also regularly charged tolls for using its roads and waterways. It used a powerful navy control, a powerful navy control the, to control the Bosporus Straits, the Black Sea, and parts of the Mediterranean. It was through the control of trade that Constantinople and the Byzantine Empire became a prosperous society. So our question is, according to the document, what are the two ways the Byzantine Empire used the location of Constantinople to its advantage? Now you're saying, what does that mean? <clears throat> Basically, they're saying what two examples from this passage lets you know that like what did they did they do in Constantinople that helped the Byzantine Emperor Empire and and the city of Constantinople like become more powerful maybe more rich how did they what did they do to give themselves advantages i hope that makes sense so if you have questions please let me know if not, um, have a great spring break. Enjoy the warm weather. I will talk to you soon. Oh, by the way, like always, if you have questions, email me, ask me in class. If not, talk to you soon. Have a great day.